Um, all right, so welcome again to this week's In Rhythm Lightning Talk. Um, as always, we have some really exciting lightning talks in the upcoming weeks. I'm your host tonight. I'm filling in for Prague. Um, I am Austin Michael Komatz, Director of Mobile Engineering here at In Rhythm. Um, our lightning talks are hosted every Thursday at 5.15 p.m. Eastern Time. Each week, one of our practice area consultants share their knowledge on the newest cutting edge technologies in the industry. This week, um, Alex Rockind will be walking us through progressive web applications. Progressive web apps leverage a host of modern web technologies to provide app users with experiences on par with native mobile apps, as well as contribute to a more effective app development cycle. Um, so as always, this is sure to be a great talk. So let's kick it off. Um, Alex, I will hand it over to you now. All right, thank you. I title, I title this progressive web apps, best of web and native. And hopefully at the end of the presentation, we will see why <clears throat> that it actually is so. Before I start, this term native, I'm going to use it uh, multiple times. Uh, so I want to clarify, native refers to native applications. And these are the applications that were written for a particular mobile platform like iOS or Android. An example would be a WhatsApp app on the iPhone. Okay. We are going to talk about app user expectations and how these expectations drive the technologies such as PWAs. We will dive into what makes an, an app a PW, uh, an actually progressive web application. Then we'll look at the service workers, which is a core technology behind PWAs. And then we'll look at the live demo and the code that actually empowers it. Users expect to have great experiences interacting with both websites and native mobile apps. On a laptop or a desktop, you pretty much have a one choice. You open your browser and you are online. On the mobile devices, you have two choices. One is a mobile browser. Another one is mobile native apps. And often users prefer interacting with the same content via a native app rather than a browser for a number of reasons because uh, the native apps feel well integrated with the device, they're available offline and uh, other things. So as a result, as a result the content providers have, uh, who are looking to provide the best experience for the users, they have to maintain multiple code bases, targeting different platforms to keep up with these user expectations. They need to have a website and then an app for an for an iPhone and an app for Android. And here come PWAs, which address this cross device challenge. A PWA is a website, but on the mobile device, it looks and feels similar to a native mobile app because it actually has features which are similar to the native apps. In other words, it combines, combines advantages of the web and uh, abilities of native apps, like being available immediately and work offline. Let's look at the PWA as a website, because it, it is both website and native. So as a website, uh, particularly it has advantages over native apps on these two features, discoverability. A PWA implements search engine optimization uh, requirements. Therefore, it is available on search engines and you can quickly Google it, find it out, click the link, open it up and start using it. So it's like a single link pass. And linkability is, uh, is uh, very much related to it because as a website, you can share that link 
And uh, the feature of a PWA, well, once you open uh, that application on your mobile device, it gets installed. There is, it gets cached on your device. So next time when you open it, it's already there. Now, PWA as, uh, as an app. Remember, we are trying to match the features that native apps have. So this is a list of features that PWAs have, uh, similarly to the native, uh, native apps. Installability. Once the app, the PWA gets uh, cached, and that's what it's called installed on, on a device, users can open it instantly. And similar to a native app, there is an icon. You just tap it and the app is open. So it looks and feel, feels like a native app. Network independent. Uh, uh, once it is cached, it can work offline with the content that was cached and even offline provide a meaningful, maybe minimal, but meaningful experience to the user. Re-engageability. The native apps have background syncs and user push notifications and so, the PWAs also support features. Access to the device hardware. Uh, there are standard web interfaces uh, that uh, protocols that allow to access the, to allow PWAs to access the mobile device, cameras, microphones, motion sensors, geolocations, and so on. What other technologies behind the PWA. And uh, the PWA is not a single technology. It just uh, makes a very smart use of uh, a number of technologies and the cumulative effect is what we have. Server work. It is a JavaScript script which runs in the background and performs tasks for the main application. It uses HTTPS to enforce a secure connection with the main application. Uh, it, has, it implements the manifest file, which is a JSON file with metadata for uh, some static resources, icons, and uh, having that allows uh, a PWA get, uh, to get installed on the uh, on a device and look and, and feel like a native app. This is the very high level architecture. The service worker as a one of the technologies of a PWA in the context of a PWA works as a proxy. Here is the page, which is this, uh, the, the, the main application uh, website. And it makes requests and gets responses from the server. And the service worker sits in between and it can intercept both requests and responses and do something with it that we'll see in a moment. It makes it very powerful. Because the service worker can intercept the requests and responses, and it can modify them. So uh, a very common case, the first time you open a PW on your device, it gets installed, it gets cached, and the next time your device is offline. Now the service worker detects that your device is offline, and then it fetches from the cache the original response and serves it back to the main application. And as far as the application is concerned, it got a valid response and it works. Again, maybe with some minimal, uh, at some minimal level, but better than nothing. What can be cached? Uh, both static resources like style sheets, scripts, icons, HTML, and dynamic data. The service workers run in a thread separate from the main application. And it uh, gives a number of advantages. One is 
the service worker does not slow down the performance of the main application. These are separate threads. Now it's much easier to implement security uh, when service worker runs in a separate thread. Uh, because in this setup, a service worker can cannot directly access the main application, cannot access its DOM in the browser. But it has an ability to communicate with uh, the main application through messaging. Because it, the service worker runs in the background, it, it can do, even when the main application is uh, not open, user is not using it, the service worker is running and it can get, for example, push notifications from the server. So when the user actually opens the app, the service worker can deliver those push notifications. And similarly, it can get a background app sync signal from the server and can update, uh, say, a style sheet of the application. That's actually a, a particular advantage over native apps because a native app would have to be uh, completely re-download it when something changes. And here, uh, there is a possibility of partial change. Uh, these are the links to uh, the repo. Uh, we are going to look at, at, at the sample app, which runs live on the GitHub pages, and uh, the repo is there. So let's look at it. Here is the very simple app. I'll show you the code. This app, uh, all it does, it goes to the publicly available Giphy API and it pulls the top 12 trending apps, uh, trending GIFs of the moment. And it changes from time to time. So all there is, is just these 12 GIFs you can see. And the code is very simple as you see, this is a index HTML, it references uh, a bunch of icons. Uh, I'm, uh, it, it uses the jQuery and a bootstrap uh, CSS. And there is a link to main.js here in main. It makes a call to this Giphy API. It go, uh, it loops over those uh, Giphys, and it inserts them in in the DOM over here under this element. So very simple. Now uh, the problem that we are trying to address here, all is well when you online, but when we are going offline and reload and it's not supposed to happen <laughs> like this and then tell you why Ooh. I'm actually ahead of myself this is what would happen when you go offline obviously there is nothing so what what I'm going to do I'm going to upgrade this basic app into uh, PWA and uh, with this, the experience, the user experience will be much better. Here, the first step, we, I am adding the PWA implementation. Uh, and oh, you just experienced that. So, I'm going back online and reloading the application. We see everything here. And now when I'm going offline, we don't see the content, but we see the, uh, the application shell, which is already a much better experience. Why? Because the PWA implementation uh, cached the static resources. 
Here are they. We see our index uh, HTML, the main JS. We see the images. So everything that is there. So it's already much better. Now the next step would be to cache the, dyna the dynamic resources. Let's go back online. And here we see that in addition to the static resources, the dynamic content is also cached, all these 12 GIFs. Now we go back offline, we reload, and the application still works. It wouldn't be up to date, but there is definitely a, a much better user experience. Now let me uh, walk you a little bit through the code to give you an idea about this PWA implementation. As I mentioned, the PWA uses service workers as a core technology. The service worker has uh, a life cycle of a number of events which goes sequentially when successful. And then of each stage, there is a event which we can listen to and detect that the previous stage ended and now we can start the new stage. So stage number one here in main uh, is registration. We register, register the service worker. The service worker runs, uh, exists in a separate script, this SWJS. And if it is successful, the script is found and it starts off without errors, we move on to the next stage. Next stage is installation. So we listen for that install event. We know that the registration was successful. And now here we are. So we are using this stage to cache these static resources. We have a list here and we just iterate over them and add them to cache. The next stage after installation, once that is done, would be activation. Uh, the activation stage here we use to clean up the static uh, resources because the case often is that the developers of this PWA updated say a style sheet. So now we need to update our application which is already installed in the device, which is cached. Uh, we are using here the version. Over here, there would be a different version. And in this loop, we will detect that the previous resources were cached, say, with 1.0, and they would be, and the current version is 1.1. Therefore, over here at the activation stage, we would remove the old versions of the static resources and the new ones would be added a step before. Another thing I want to bring your attention to is caching strategies. So we are caching both the static resources and dynamic content. And we are using different strategies for that. For a static cache, the static by definition changes relatively rarely. And therefore, our strategy is uh, we first try to cache, uh, to, keep, to fetch the resources from cache. And if not available, we are going to the network. So the fir very first time you open your app, everything is loaded and cached on the device. The second time, for example, uh, you are online but the service worker which intercepts the request checks first if the resources are available in the local cache and they are if that's the case it serves these resources back to the application without making a request to the server which actually saves uh, the user's data if that's uh, an important thing if there is nothing in cache like it was the first time, then it would go, it, it would 
proceed with the network call and uh, fetch it up and cache it for the next time. With the case of the dynamic content, we here we employ the opposite uh, strategy. It always try to make a network call first. And if the network is not available, then we fall back and try to find those resources cached. And if that's, that's the case, then it would be served. I walked you through the life cycle of the, of the service worker, and there is one more event that is being used, fetch. So fetch is being sent out whenever a main application makes a request or, or response. And this is the way how a service worker detect, detects that the, there is a request or response and then can act accordingly. For example, it can examine the request. In particular, it checks the URL and, it's, and it has the logic, whatever it is, and acts accordingly. It can decide, I have a cached response and I can respond with this static cache that I found available. Uh, these are very simple, straightforward strategies, but uh, there is actually, in the actual production environment, there are multiple of more complicated strategies that are being employed. I want to bring your attention to one more thing. Here, at the very beginning, at the first, uh, very first stage of the service worker, or the registration, before we actually do it, there is a condition. The condition is uh, we check if the browser of the user actually supports service workers. So the modern browsers, the all modern browsers do support them, but older brow browsers do not. If that is the case, there is no support, then simply the service worker would not be running. Uh, remember what we are trying to accomplish here. We have a main application and we are trying to enrich the user experience, upgrading it to, with the PWA capabilities. And that's where this progressive name comes from. We are progressively enhancing the capabilities of the application or the website that we are dealing with. Another one for the developers I want to bring to your attention that uh, in Chrome, I didn't check out uh, Firefox, but I imagine or other browsers, I imagine it's uh, quite similar that these tools that we have in the inspector are very powerful and allow us to uh, do develop, development of this uh, PWAs in particular in a very transparent and helpful way as you, you, you just saw. So with this, I want to conclude. And the, con the, the conclusion is that the progressive web applications, they leverage a host of modern web technologies to provide mobile users with experience on par with native mobile apps and contribute to a more effective app development in a sense that instead of maintaining multiple code bases, uh, uh, we can have, in certain cases, uh, we can be perfectly fine with a single code base for a website that works on multiple platforms. Uh, I have a few links here where for example, this one shows you, if you check it out, a number of high profile companies that use PWAs for their, for their websites. For example, Pinterest, one of them. Okay, this is uh, concluded. Austin Michael. Please. Uh, thank questions. you, Alex. Um, yeah, before we wrap it up, does anyone have any questions? No, I, I do have one question, but um, if, if anyone else has any questions, please feel free.
I have a thing uh, that's that's been on my mind, uh, Alex. Um, have you yes, uh, have you encountered much differences when testing um, a PWA as opposed to a you know a regular web app? Uh, could you elaborate what kind of testing? Yeah, like if there's any difference when you're trying to, uh, you know, test a, a, a progressive web application as opposed to like a traditional web application. If there's any major difference or, you know, something that makes maybe automated testing different or any setup difference, anything that comes to mind? For that matter, I think it is a regular website. So whatever works for the regular website should work here. Uh, there is more standards to, in order to be considered, in, in order for a website to be considered a PWA, a number of requirements should be fulfilled. Uh, search engine optimization is one of them. And all the best website processes, uh, accessibility, all that is still uh, enforced. And I did try to use uh, in the Chrome, the in the inspector, right? We have uh, we have, for example, uh, how it's called the lighthouse. Right, which allows you to test web applications. So this works perfectly fine with this. And I think it, they have a, even a separate section uh, focused on the service workers, if I'm not confusing something. So for that matter, it's still a website. It just has more features in it, but all these features, they are web standards. They are not something external it's still javascript html css nothing more than that awesome thanks alex this is great i'm curious alex um working like i'm not sure how much you've worked on this directly but have you faced any drawbacks versus um like creating an, a native mobile application or even using something cross-platform like react native I know that mobile applications are your specialty specifically. I, I think uh, I don't want to overblow PWAs. Uh, like with any technology, there is a uh, good use cases for, uh, for PWA in, in particular. I, and PWAs do not replace mobile applications altogether, no. Uh, one reason is, uh, for example, access to the hardware devices, uh, hardware uh, features of a device. Uh, surely native apps have more access to them and more complete uh, uh, access to a bigger list of uh, individual features. The PWAs uh, usually use either established or uh, uh, sort of, ex not sort of, but experimental, that they're labeled experimental features of the web standards to access these hardware devices. So the access is more limited. Uh, the access on the iOS is always uh, behind, falling behind, is, is more limited than on the Android, is less open, so to say. So there are certain difficulties there. It's, it's all there, it's coming, but slower. So uh, I would answer like this. Uh, with all that, however, when you have a simpler case, maybe you don't need to have an app, uh, a, a native app. Maybe implementing your website in a proper way would be perfectly sufficient. And that's why if you take a look at these successful uh, high profile websites, you see that the Starbucks, uh, Pinterest have, uh, I, I tried the, the, the Pinterest website, I opened it on, the, on my iPhone. It created that icon, you can open it, you can tap it and it, everything is very smooth. Uh, again, it depends on the, what you want 
uh, your app, your website to be able to do on a device. Cool, thank you. Sure. Anyone uh, have any other questions before we wrap it up? Okay. Um, yeah, there are no other questions. Thank you again, Alex, for this talk. It was like uh, super insightful, great to see. So thank you again. Um, as a quick reminder, as always, In Rhythm Lightning Talks are hosted every Thursday night at 5.15 p.m. Eastern time. Next week, we have Ilya Pavlov talking about UI testing frameworks and page object model architecture. So that's gonna be an awesome talk from our SDET practice. Um, so as always, please join us again next week for that exciting talk. And thank you all for joining. Have a wonderful night.